What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we finally got our new Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the brand new Raspberry Pi Zero 2W from the Raspberry Pi Foundation and I can tell you right now that this does have a lot more power than the original Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W. I've actually had this in my possession for the last two weeks. I've had ample time to mess around with it. And I'm really impressed by the performance of the new Zero. As you can see, it's the same form factor as the original Raspberry Pi Zero, or in this case, the Zero W. So existing cases should fit. There might be a few exceptions here and there, but we do have the same exact layout, the same form factor, and the same ports. But we are rocking a much better CPU in this thing. So yeah, it's finally here. We've been waiting a little while for a new Raspberry Pi Zero. This is going to be going for $15, and in my opinion, it'll be well worth it. I'll leave some links in the description. But let's go ahead and move right over to the specs and see what we're getting here with the Pi Zero 2W. So with this new release, we have a new SIP from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which stands for System and Package. This is the RP3A0. Basically what we have here is the CPU, RAM, and GPU all sandwiched into a little package. On the GPU side of things, it's a Broadcom BCM 2710A1. Quad core 64 bit Cortex A53 at one gigahertz, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Super easy to overclock to 1.3 gigahertz, and it does make a big difference. With the Zero 2, they're only going to be offering one RAM variant, and it's only 512 megabytes. I know this is going to be a big letdown for a lot of people, but they're stating that it's not technically feasible. They would either have to stack two 512 megabyte chips on top of each other, which would make it too large for the SIP, or the one gig chip, which is already too large for the SIP. So they're going to be sticking with 512. I personally would have loved to see at least a one gigabyte version of this, but we're still getting some pretty decent performance, and we'll take a look at that in a second. We get 802.11bgn Wi-Fi with Bluetooth 4.2. Unfortunately, we don't have 5 GHz on the Zero model. One micro USB port here is for OTG or data transfer. The other one's for power, just like the original. A micro SD card slot, mini HDMI, a CSI camera connector. We still get those 40 GPIO pins. And in the technical data, they state to use a 5 volt 2.5 amp power supply, just like the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B+. Before we jump into testing, I just wanted to show you my setup. I am doing some overclocking on the CPU, so I added a heat sink. It's actually much bigger than I need on this thing. I've got a micro USB hub. I've got my HDMI plugged in, 128 gigabyte micro SD card, and I'm using a three amp, five volt power supply. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in. And uh, I'm just gonna let it boot. I'm not gonna skip through it or anything. This is booting from a micro SD card. It's a cheaper silicon power 128 gigabyte card that you can pick up from Amazon. As of making this video and all of my testing, the only operating system I've been able to run so far is Raspberry Pi OS. As soon as more developers get these in their hands, we'll have more operating systems. But you know, getting this early, that was the only thing that I could test out on. But I gotta say, for this little board only having 512 megabytes of RAM, it actually functions much better than I thought it would, especially with a desktop-centric operating system. I wouldn't run out and buy one of these specifically to run Raspberry Pi OS on, you know, to browse the web and stuff like that. It's totally possible. We will look at all of that in just a second. These Raspberry Pi Zeros were really designed for smaller projects like handhelds, little cameras, security systems. I mean, there's so much that you can do with these Pis. Now that we have more CPU power, we will see some really amazing projects with the Raspberry Pi Zero too. But since we're here and this is the only operating system that I have access to right now, Let's take a look at it. I'm gonna connect this to my screen capture so we can get a better look at everything. All right, so here we are running Raspberry Pi OS on the new Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Let's uh, check out the task manager real quick. As you can see, we have 512 megabytes of RAM or 427 megabytes usable. I'll go ahead and run NeoFetch. So far, I've actually had a really good time with this, and as of making this video here, I am overclocked. Everything you see in the video while running Raspberry Pi OS is overclocked, except for the benchmarks. I'll show you those in just a second. I wanted to run it at those stock speeds just to give you an idea, but as you can see here, I do have this up to 1.3, and that's about as far as I can go with it. Anything higher than that, it just locks up on me, no matter how much I overvolt that CPU. But yeah, I mean, for being such a small little board, and compared to the original Raspberry Pi Zero, this thing is actually pretty snappy. If you go and try to use the Raspberry Pi Zero right now with Raspberry Pi OS, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This is actually a pretty usable experience. Now, I wouldn't pick one of these up as my main PC to run Raspberry Pi OS on. I would go with something like the Raspberry Pi 4, but this can definitely get you by.
Now in this video, I did run some benchmarks. We're definitely going to be testing out some emulation because this is going to be an awesome little board for handhelds. And I just wanted to show a little bit of web browsing, some video playback and things like that. There's still a lot more software that needs to be optimized for this little thing. After all, this is the first day of release. And what you're seeing right now is kind of pre-release software. In a couple weeks, as soon as a lot of people start getting their hands on this board, this will be optimized a lot better than it is right now. But uh, it's really not that bad for what we have here. So let's check out a little bit of YouTube video playback. Remember, we don't have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi here. I'm running over a 2.4 gigahertz network. And I will make sure that this is at 720. So go right here, 720, we're at 720. Actually, we're not at 720. It's not showing up correctly here. Let's go right there. Just to be 100% positive that this is 720p, you'll see we still get a few skips here and there, but it's much, much better than the original Raspberry Pi Zero. I'm actually pretty impressed by video streaming on this, and video playback with VLC is going to be much better. We're streaming this from YouTube using the Chromium browser right now, and to tell you the truth, on a little board like this, 480 is probably where it's going to be, but as you can see, we are at 720 right now, and playback is actually really, really good. But remember, I am at 1.3 gigahertz. We have a 300 megahertz overclock on that CPU. It does make a difference from 1 to 1 1.3, and if you're going to be using this with a desktop environment, I would definitely recommend overclocking this little thing. Hmm. And when it comes to just regular old web browsing, we'll uh, just head to the Raspberry Pi Foundation's website. You see that everything loads up pretty quickly for what we have here. It's not bad at all, and uh, yeah, this is really impressive for being such a small little board and being the second revision of the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's definitely not as quick as the Raspberry Pi 4, but we're working with a much lower end SoC in this thing. I'm surprised by the performance, and uh, it's much better than I actually expected it to be. So like I mentioned, I did run some benchmarks. We're going to face this off against the 3, 3 plus, 4, and the 0. And then I want to move right into some emulation because that's the big reason I'm super interested in the new Pi Zero 2. First up, very simple CPU benchmark. Sysbench with a max prime up to 20,000. On the Zero 2, we finished this in 104 seconds. Lower is better. On the original Raspberry Pi Zero W, 544 seconds, and it really comes down to that thing only having a single core CPU. Now, as you can see, we're actually really close to the Raspberry Pi 3 at the stock clocks here. We're at 104, Raspberry Pi 3 came in at 96 seconds. As soon as we overclock the 0 2 to 1.3 gigahertz, we actually beat out that Pi 3 at its stock clocks, but we can't get close to the Pi 4. For the next set of benchmarks we're going to see, I just kind of faced this off against the Pi 4 and the Pi 3B+. I didn't include the 0 or the 0W, mainly because I was a little lazy to run this whole test on it, and it probably would have taken about 9 to 12 hours to finish up on that single core CPU. But you'll kind of see a pattern here that the Zero 2 at the stock clocks is really, really close to that Raspberry Pi 3. And with the overclock, I'm pretty sure with most of this stuff, except for the memory test, we could have beat it out, even in the GPU area here. It's actually pretty awesome to see this form factor rocking the power of a Raspberry Pi 3. All right, so now it's time to move over to a little bit of emulation. And I did run into some issues with a few emulators I wanted to test, like Redream for Dreamcast. I just couldn't get it to launch for me, but when it comes to the standalone version of PPSSPP, I had no trouble running this. And uh, we'll check out the performance in a second. And also, I have RetroArch installed here with Raspberry Pi OS. As soon as the developers for Botocera and RetroPi get an image made for this, we will be testing that out on the channel. But for the time being, this is how I have to test emulators right now, and for this, I'm actually going to move back over to my desk. First up, Game Boy Advance. We're using RetroArch here with the VBA Next Core. Looking really good with Sonic Advance 3. FPS is up in the top right-hand corner. When it comes to Game Boy Advance emulation, I mean, we're already good to go with this. Not much more optimization is needed, except for the screen tearing. You might be able to see it here. There is a bit of screen tearing, and this can be fixed down the road. 
Next on the list, PS1 using RetroArch and the PCSX Rearm Core. With the easier to emulate stuff, we're getting good performance. Bloody Roar 2 was a bit on the lower side, it was around 52, and hopefully once some of these emulator developers get this in their hands, they can fix that up. I do have a good feeling that it would run it well because we're right on par with the Raspberry Pi 3, which does PS1 really good. So since I couldn't get Dreamcast working with ReDream, I figured I'd go ahead and try out some PSP. This is the standalone version of PPSSPP, I think it's 1.91. I've installed it in Raspberry Pi OS, and with the easier to emulate stuff, we're getting great performance. 1x resolution, I do have all the hacks on that I can have, but I don't have any frame skip going for these first two games, Little Big Planet and Family Guy. But when it comes down to it, these are easier games to emulate with PPSSPP. On low-end SOCs, I've had good luck with both of these games because really, they only run at 30 FPS on the original hardware. Still, for being a Raspberry Pi Zero, this is really impressive to see PSP running on it this well. But when you get up to the harder to emulate stuff like Chains of Olympus, this probably will never work at full speed. Even with frame skip on, it's lagging out. This is just one of those games that's really hard to emulate, and even the Pi 4 has a hard time doing it. I got a pretty good feeling that we'll see some awesome handhelds with the new Pi Zero too, given the emulation performance already. I mean, this is basically straight out of the box day one with no optimizations from devs who really know what they're doing here. So I can't wait until the Retro Pi team and Bado Sarah get a hold of these things. So in the end, with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W only priced at $15, this is a great way to get into the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you're already into the Pi and you've got a Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 3B+, Raspberry Pi 4, and a CM4, then you probably don't need to pick one up. But, you know, if you have all those boards, I know you're the person that's probably going to go out and buy a few of these just to have them because these are going to make really awesome little project boards. So that's going to wrap it up for my initial video on the Pi Zero 2. I'll definitely have a couple more coming. If there's anything else you want to see running on this board right now with Raspberry Pi OS, just let me know in the comments below. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on the new Zero 2W. Did the Raspberry Pi Foundation come through? Did they miss the mark only adding 512 megabytes of RAM? Personally, I think they hit the nail on the head for what we do with these Raspberry Pi Zeros. And at a $15 price point, I think it's a really good deal. If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. And like always, Thanks for watching.